Let's go to Canberra now and catch up with New South Wales Liberal Senator Holly Hughes. Thanks for joining us, Sir Holly. I want to get to this issue of the treatment for women and respect of women. And the point of highlighting some of this is you've got to have respect for women across the ideological divide for all women in this country. But um, Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, do you reckon that conservative women get a raw deal? Uh, look, I think the most isolated women, and I said this in one of your programs earlier this week, the most isolated women in Canberra at the moment are coalition women, whether they're MPs, senators, staff, because if your politics are of a particular persuasion and you are attacked or denigrated, there is a mob waiting to come out and support you and defend you uh, and uh, stand around you. If you are on a different side of politics, as I am with Nicole Flint, uh, we are either deserving of the abuse and threats that we get, or if we call it out, we are a liar. When Nicole was called a liar for calling out the treatment she received at the last election in Boothby by a former political journalist on Twitter, and I uh, quote tweeted him my disgust at his comments, I was then accused of being part of a coordinated smear campaign because I had the... the gall to defend one of my colleagues it's who happens to share a political persuasion as me. And it's extraordinary. It's an extraordinary double standard. The journalist you're talking about, of course, is Paul Bongiorno, a former president mm. of the Canberra Press Gallery. That's how deep this sort of double standard and partisan hypocrisy runs. But I want to get yeah, you... I mean, they don't even pretend anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, like, it's exactly. not even kind of under the surface. It's just blatant disregard for conservative women and conservative viewpoints. Uh, and if you're not on the left, then you deserve it. Yes, yeah, spot on. There is no doubt that's the case. I don't know how it changes, but we do like to highlight it on this program. Now, I want to get your thoughts on quotas. So many people in the Liberal Party, I've spoken to Liberal women today, who remain opposed to quotas. They say it's an abomination against the idea of selection on merit. You disagree with Look, that I, now? It's time for quotas? I've always been opposed to quotas. I've always been someone who supported uh, merit-based merit pre-selection. I you know, believe in the Menzian principle of equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. My concerns is for a lot of women that want to enter politics and get involved in the political sphere, it's not about equality of opportunity anymore, that those opportunities are not being uh, provided and, and uh, open to them in the same way as they are to a number of men. So I would still like to see ideally an opportunity, uh, an equality of opportunity, but we do need to see changes. And like any negotiation, you don't take things off the table before you get to where you're going. And I think because we do, and everyone I think recognises we must do better in this place, not just the Liberal Party, every party in this place needs to do better, the media need to do better, but if we're going to have a serious discussion about how we improve workplace culture, how we improve women's participation, every single thing should be on the agenda for every single party. Yeah, I think uh, the idea of merit to someone, uh, a, a woman very close to me explained uh, this afternoon who was rethinking her own views on uh, quotas, was talking about the trouble is that the people imposing the merit test are often are not a diverse group themselves. So, uh, no, take no, an extreme example. They might be a little homogenous. Well, exactly. If it's little... a whole bunch of blokes, depending on who has the most merit, then maybe the women is the women aren't judged uh, on a fair contest of merit. I mean, it, it's a possibility. Well, and who decides what is merit? And that's exactly right. And uh, there is an unconscious bias sometimes to tend to gravitate towards your own. Pick what you know. And uh, if you're a particular gender with a particular background and a particular socioeconomic status, then perhaps someone who presents as a slight mirror image of you might present more meritoriously than someone who might challenge your ideals and come at things from a different angle. So it is about who decides who is meritorious. Uh, and I think, you know, if we need to address how those decisions are being made, then perhaps quotas are one way to ensure that. Now, just quickly, two big developments today. Michael Johnson, the coalition front bencher in the New South Wales State Parliament, has now stepped aside uh, because he's the subject of police investigations on rape allegations, which he denies. Also claims in federal parliament that the Prime Minister's office was backgrounding against Brittany Higgins' partner. Your view of the way these issues are playing out? 
Well, I really don't want to make any comment with regards to Mr Johnson. I'm not familiar with all of the details of that, and I do understand that it's under police investigation now. Uh, but with regards to Ms Higgins, I understand that she's now made a complaint direct to the Chief of Staff in the Prime Minister's office. And of course, uh, that's where the complaint should be targeted. Uh, a formal complaint needs to go through a formal process uh, rather than claiming something in a newspaper or in a television interview and assuming that that is now a, an official complaint. So uh, I'm not aware of any backgrounding. I don't know whether that happened or not. Uh, I've certainly heard what the Prime Minister's response has been. But now that it has gone to Mr Kunkel, he'll be able to uh, make these sufficient inquiries. Thanks for joining us, Holly. I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Holly Hughes, a Liberal Senator for New South Wales.